Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews of Tech Channel, and I'm on day two of my home networking makeover. Day one was getting faster internet to the house. I did manage that. Our provider here is Time Warner, and I was we had 20 megabit per second download, 2 megabit per second upload. Now, after working something out with them, we're getting 30 megabit per second download, 5 megabit per second upload for just $10 more a month. If you missed that video, I'll put the link up here. You can check that out. Day two is about distributing that internet to everyone because we have Wi-Fi problems. Now, we currently have an older wireless N router. It's the D-Link DIR655. Very good in its day, but really old now. And that's in the far corner of the house, about 60 feet from here. I'm here with my laptop, and with nobody else doing anything on the internet, it'll do pretty well. Um, I can even stream video to this. But if I get somebody else in the house watching Netflix, this will not only not stream, I have to pause, it pauses waiting for web pages to come up, or it'll do a complete disconnect for 30 or 40 seconds and show the network's not available, and then it comes back just from one person streaming Netflix. Now, I know that's not using more than two or three megabit per second of the download speed. So it's not that we don't have enough internet to go around, it's that it doesn't go around. It's, there's a problem with the Wi-Fi. Uh, in addition to that, when I look on my phone at the Wi-Fi analyzer, I can usually see seven or eight other Wi-Fi networks in the neighboring houses that are coming into the house, all on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. So we've got all that to contend with as well. So I'm hoping the solution to these issues will be this little guy right here. This is the possibly the fastest router available right now. This is from Asus. It's their RT-AC66U. It's a router that uses the new AC wireless standard. And it also does N, which I'm going to test it out today in its backward compatibility mode with N. See if I can resolve those issues where just one person doing something even a little intensive on the Wi-Fi network takes the whole thing down, see if it'll resolve that. And then tomorrow, I've got the uh, companion piece adapter for this, a little uh, USB dongle I'm gonna plug into the laptop that it also does AC standard. And I'm gonna see what the maximum is in terms of transfer rate, how far out in the yard or across the street I can get and still get signal. So I'll put a link up to that video here when I've got that video done tomorrow or the next day. For now, let me show you what I'm gonna have at the heart of my network and see if this will really do the trick. Now this is a pricey router. Uh, I think I got it for a little over $180. And I don't think that's gonna come down for a while. It's um, very good reviews, and if you want really fast, this is the one to get. The reason I'm upgrading to this very high-speed router now is that early next year, Google will be rolling out their Google Fiber Internet service here in Austin. will be the second city in the U.S. to get that, and they'll be offering gigabit internet speed, which is like 30 times faster than the speed that I just upgraded to for $70 a month. So that's when this, the maximum speed of this will really come into play. For right now, I wanna see how this does with its quality of service algorithms and how well it can handle multiple streams, like several people watching Netflix at the same time or somebody with YouTube, somebody gaming, to get them the data they need without anybody pausing, without anybody losing the connection. So here's the content of the box, the heart of the matter right here. The router, this is hefty, and I was reading about this, it's actually got a very large heat sink inside because this is basically functioning as a computer. The chips have to do that much work to sort the data and send it out and decide who gets what and who gets what first. So, little computer in here. This actually almost feels as heavy as a small notebook. We've also got three external antennas. They're not as aesthetically pleasing as those the new uh, D-Link routers, the one that sort of looked like a tall can of soda. But if it works better, that's really what I want. This is going to be tucked away in the corner of my bedroom anyway. I don't care how it looks. Now, they do give you a disk so you can go through and follow step by step to set up the router if you're not much into networking or you haven't done this before. But I'm going to go through and do it manually. I'll show you what I do on the screens with that. This also says it has a utility. There are two USB ports in this, and I think you can use it to share a printer or to share a hard drive as shared storage on your network. I haven't had much luck with those in the past. The DIR655 that I'm replacing offered that, and it was a mess, but I'll see. It says here I'm a VIP member, which I ought to be after paying $180-something for a router. And then here's the quick start guide that will probably only cover very little of what you can do with this. To really go in and customize it, you'll need to load the full user manual, which is either available at their website or you can get it off the disk. It comes also with a flat 
um, Ethernet cable. Maybe that's the fashion now too. Power adapter and a dealy that you somehow hook onto it to stand it up. There's even a particular way that they suggest that you stand this up to get the maximum throughput of data. All the important stuff here on the router is located on the back. You've got the port that you're going to go to your uh, cable DSL modem. You've got four gigabit Ethernet ports, so there shouldn't be anything slowing you down there. We've got the three antennas. Got the WPS button here, so you don't always have to go type the password in. You can push this button to start it searching, go to your device, push the WPS button there, and have it make the connection. We've got the USB ports that I mentioned, two of those. It actually has an on-off physical switch and a place to plug in the power. Okay, I have assembled it according to the instructions, and you're thinking this looks kind of a weird way to stand up your router. I agree, but... So rather than have the, the router stand flat like they normally do with the antennas coming up from the back or even sideways, doing it this way gets the antennas as high up as possible. And they do recommend you have the ones on the end out at about 45 degrees and this one pretty much straight up and down. So before taking this and replacing my very aged DIR655 router, I want to show you on the laptop here some speed test results. I have a program called LAN Speed Test that is supposedly the best program for measuring your network speed. And I've got that running here. The router again is in the far corner of the house and plugged directly with a wire into the router is a desktop computer that's running the server version of this program. So what it, what it lets me do is it keeps in memory a file that it's going to transfer across the network wirelessly. And we can see how fast it's able to transfer it this way and that way replace the router, run the test again, see how much better, hopefully a lot better, this nice new expensive top of the line router is. All right, here's the results of my most recent run of the test. This is without anyone else on the network, I mean other than the phones and so forth, which occasionally do jump on the Wi-Fi to update something or another. But my write speed is showing at 38 megabit per second and my reading 45, which means I'm Uploading at 38, downloading at 45 megabits per second. All right, here into the wired tangle in the corner of the house where all the networking stuff resides. I've got the cable modem, uh, Motorola surfboard, Doxis 3. I've got my UMA phone, and here the old DIR 655. You can tell not exactly an ideal placement for transmission and so forth, but it's where it would at least not fall off the shelf. Okay, got everything plugged in and turned on. Kind of cool, the blue lights on the front. Hopefully there won't be too much of a problem in the bedroom. Sometimes you got to tape over those or turn the device away so you don't have blue flashing. Looks like you got pol non-stop police raid going on in your bedroom every night. Not in a good way. As for the router itself, with that um, the pattern on the front, it actually is a handsome device. If only it wasn't stuck back here in a wrapped up wire dust filled corner. It would be kind of nice, I suppose, if you had to have it out somewhere where people could see it. And here on the screen, this is of the desktop that's plugged into it directly, is the, the menu to get you started setting it up. I'm going to go over to the laptop and see if I can do this via Wi-Fi. All right, came back to the laptop. Of course, my old Wi-Fi was no longer listed in the list of available networks, but there was a new one called Asus, and it was listed with no password. I told it to join it. It said, hey, would you like to set up the network or just connect the network without going through the setup? I told it just to connect. Open the browser, here we are. Now, I have heard that the firmware for this when it originally shipped was terrible, made it almost unusable. Um, however, they have a new firmware out that makes it into its wonderful modern day self. So I've got to check pretty quick here and see if I've got that newest firmware update installed. Let's see some of what they want to know for setup. Okay, starts off wanting a password to log into the router. This is not the Wi-Fi password. The default uh, login is admin, default password is password, by the way. I changed that, and so now I'm being asked to set up the SSIDs for both the 2.4 gigahertz network and the 5 gigahertz network. And with this little checkbox here, it looks like I can set it up once and have it copied so they'll both be the same, though I, I could see that being confusing, not knowing which network you were joining. So for my testing purposes here, I'm going to name them something different. Okay, I found the 2.4 gigahertz ASUS network that I set up and joined that. Here you can see the settings, what the main screen, uh, programming screen of the router takes you to. I checked the firmware. It's got 3.0, 0.0, 0.4, 0.270. So I went over to the 
ASUS website, and they have that version. It's not the newest. This page is kind of messed up with the scroll bar you can hardly find. Um, but the newer one is a beta, so I'm not going to try that. The one that's on there, I believe, is the one that everyone says works really well. Also, I wanted to point out here in the quality of service page, I'd read about this, that it's off by default, that you can't actually get the full potential speed of the AC channel with the quality of service on. I don't know if it's because of the processing that needs to be done to sort your data out. There was some reason for it. Anyway, I'll try it with it on and off and see what kind of results I get. Got the router installed. Gonna try a test out here on the 2.4 gigahertz network with the regular adapter that's built into the laptop. Well, I don't think that's too different from hmm, what I was getting before. Let me run it again. No? Well, that's interesting. All right, well, I'm not seeing any difference in the throughput speed to this laptop from the new router, 60 feet or so, with several walls that away, um, pretty much the same throughput as the old router. I guess the question is going to be how well it handles multiple streams. So I'm going to go now, get the TV doing a Netflix stream, uh, the Wii doing something else, get the kids to watch something on YouTube. I'll try to get as many things going, have a music streaming out of the phone. Then I'll see how it does. Okay, I've got a TV running a high definition Netflix stream. I've got the Wii running a high definition Netflix stream. I've got a laptop running a high definition YouTube video. I've got my phone streaming music from Google Play. I'm gonna run this test again. Okay, let's see what we get now. Definitely slowed down, but still coming through. I think that may be the key. Okay, I'm going to try to play one of my YouTube videos here. See if it will play. Before I couldn't even get to web pages if I had one person streaming Netflix. Now I've got two Netflix streams, a high definition YouTube. Oh, I forgot another, another kid just web browsing and then I've got my phone streaming Hi, music. Reviews, and we are here to review these Angry Bird Air Swimmers. This is I need to listen to that guy. I'm curious to see if it's going to pause or keep going. I guess, let's see if we can set it for high definition. Yeah, I can see it's getting a little bit ahead. That's pretty amazing with everything else going on. And previously, I could hardly load a web page with one person doing Netflix. I've got all these high definition streams going, and yet I can start another high definition stream here. Okay, now I'm impressed. Okay, so I finally saw where this can actually show some improvement on my network, even if it's not the individual throughput, which may be limited by the adapter that's in here, may be limited by the network interference from the neighbors and so forth. But in terms of doing multiple streams, seems to have resolved the issue, which is good. Now, and the other thing is the LAN test speed. When I ran that after setting up the new router, I was really disappointed to see that the throughput hadn't improved, but I didn't know what to attribute it to. Well, I thought, to test it out with this same machine, I uh, unboxed my adapter, my USB adapter that uh, goes with this, the comp companion piece that's also able to do wireless AC, but it has this multi-antenna something or another inside of it, and of course it also is backwards compatible with N. And they give you this nifty thing here that you plug it into and it lets you just clip it onto your monitor. Again, with the thinking, I guess, from Asus that the higher you can get this up, the better reception you're gonna get with your Wi-Fi. And so I set this up, with the little dealy, plugged it in here, ran the speed test again. Let me show you the results I'm getting now. All right, so this is the last run that I did. Definitely an improvement now, and this is with uh, several people online. I know we've got one Netflix streaming, I think some YouTube and somebody else playing games. So let me run it again, see if I can duplicate this now. Whoa, that was a high one. There's definitely a lot more throughput than there is with the internal wireless N adapter in the laptop. And I think that's attributable to the, the multi-antenna, multi-stream capability of this adapter piece that I've got plugged in. So I'm finally seeing some improvement in the numbers, definitely seeing improvement in the performance of the network. We only have one complaint. They've been out there a couple hours using it now. And that is our Wii, which is five, six years old, I'm thinking. The, it seems to, when we're streaming Netflix, after 15, 20 minutes, it seems to reset the network connection and start over again. I don't know if the hardware in the, in the Wii is so old it's causing it, or I'm thinking it's more likely the security settings in the router 
are probably set some way that the Wii can't quite deal with too well. So I'm thinking it's something like that. I'll work on that some more and let you know. But I'm pleased so far with both of these. I'm going to call it a night now. Tomorrow I'll get on to the AC networking side of things and see what the absolute maximums are. But the fact that they have calmed down the family in terms of not complaining about all the disconnects, everything seems to be transmitting smoothly tonight. So I'll give you an update on that after another days of actual use with these. If you'd like to check them out online, I've put links down below to both of them. And just one last cool thing I want to show you tonight I found here in the router settings. Never had this available in a router before. I'm sure I would have abused it if I had. I'll have to hold back. And I don't know that there's a downside to pushing the number too high. Anyway, let me show you what it is. It's right at the bottom here. Transmit power adjustment. They've got it set for 80 milliwatts. It goes up to 200. So you can adjust the transmit power of the router. Kind of a scary thing to put into the hands of a homeowner. So for tomorrow's video, part three of this home networking makeover, I'll put the link to that up here when I have it done. That will include running this system with the 802.11 AC standard, in other words, putting it on the 5 gigahertz and running it for as fast as it will possibly go, see what the fastest transmission speed I can get. And then I'm going to play with that transmit power a little and then see how far down the block I can go and still get on my Wi-Fi network. So it should be fun. I'll put that link up when I've got the video ready. If you want to be notified automatically when it comes up, be sure to subscribe.